So just sharing my Exo Business application uh, so that you can all see it. And uh, first I'll take you to where dashboards are maintained uh, so you have an understanding of what's already there and who can, uh, how you can manage who has access to the dashboards. Okay? So that's in the configuration module. And most of the people on this webinar would be set up with access to the uh, XO config or administration module. Uh, so dashboard maintenance is under admin. And then if you scroll down, you'll see dashboards and set up widgets. Okay. So a widget is effectively what's shown on the screen uh, in the dashboard window. Um, difference between the two, uh, a dashboard might contain multiple widgets. Okay. So a an example of a standard uh, dashboard might be a job snapshot. And in the EXO configuration uh, screen, there's only a few options. So each dashboard or widget has a name, a refresh frequency, uh, which is how often it will automatically refresh itself when it's on your screen. Uh, what modules is it available to be viewed in? Uh, and you can selectively tick either all or specific modules. That in itself would make it visible or not visible to different people depending on where they work. Uh, then in addition to that, you can assign any widget to any menu. Okay, So each person uh, or user of your EXO system is assigned a menu uh, and making the uh, widget available to uh, specific menus then means you are basically managing who's got access to it. Uh, then you have widget types. Okay, So there are a few types of widgets. This example is a clarity widget, which is basically like a clarity report, except more graphical. Uh, other options are a URL, which is basically a link to a website, a pivot table, a grid, and a form widget. So I'll show you examples of uh, each of those. Uh, the simplest ones to create yourself are grid and pivot table widgets are basically just little SQL queries. So it's in Exo config that you would work to either make widgets available to people um, or create or update widgets. So I'll touch on a couple of examples of creating and modifying widgets uh, and I'll come back to that. So back here in Exo Business, uh, where are widgets available? They're effectively available anywhere. Uh, the most common places people tend to view them is in two or three areas. One is the Exo Analytics module, uh, which is effectively a dashboard solution uh, that collates dashboards into different areas. Not all of our customers use analytics, but it's certainly a very useful tool, particularly if you want to make uh, information available to people who maybe aren't necessarily transactional users in the system. So you can actually make a login available specifically to the analytics module. It doesn't consume an Exo Business license, uh, and you have an equivalent number of analytics licenses to your combined total of EXO, job costing, and CRM licenses. Okay, so analytics, when launched, has tabs at the top. Sales, invoice list, order list, stock, finance, and purchases. And there are two custom tabs that can be added. Um, and I'll show you examples of those in a moment. Okay, so on your screen, uh, the way that 
analytics displays when first launched is there are four widgets or four sections to the screen. Um, that is all able to be uh, user maintained. Okay, so I actually prefer to have a little less busyness on the screen. I like just like to have my screen in two halves. So the way that you can reposition a widget is you click on the title, start moving it around, and you'll see these yellow arrows then start to follow you. And then depending on where you hover, it's going to show you where that widget's going to reposition itself. Uh, so left, right, top, bottom, and middle effectively means over the top. Uh, so if I go middle, it's effectively created a tab next to the other one that was already there. And I'm going to do the same with this one. And then this one here, I'm going to overlap on there. And the same with that one. So now effectively I've got two halves of the screen and it just makes the the widgets themselves a bit more graphically easy to read. Uh, I can now save that screen and call it Sales 1. So that next time I launch Analytics, that's basically what I'm going to see. Okay, so there's standard dashboards. We've got a sales summary, which allows you to drill in by branch and look at information uh, from a sales margin point of view by uh, day, month, uh, run rate. Oh, I'm feeling sick about it, Log. The problem is I only do one. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, so then you have uh, any other widget that you choose to see or not see available as tabs across the page. So it's customer sales history, debtor invoices on the left. On the right, this is an example of what is called a clarity widget in a chart style. So this is basically top 10 customers by sales, uh, showing the customer and their year-to-date sales value, which is drillable. So click on the bar chart. Yeah, it's set up takes you to that customer's account where you can see their sales turnover month, year, last year, last month. Invoice list is a good way of checking margin. Okay, so if I show you an example. Uh, this is a list of every invoice that's been created, regardless of where it was created or how, job, sales order, straight invoice, and the uh, invoice value, cost, profit, margin. Uh, you can filter that by salespeople, and obviously it's a good way of keeping a track of high or low markups or margins and investigating why that might have occurred. This can also be filtered just to say, show me, say for example, less than 5% margin. They can discount, but not that day margin. Right. If we see something coming that's way over, everyone expects. Uh, next along the list is the order list, which is pretty much a listing of sales orders in the system. Uh, total value pending value, uh, value in foreign currency if you have foreign currency customers. Uh, then we move across to stock. Stock on hand by warehouse with proportion of total stock as a percentage. Uh, top stock by sales. 
top stock by margin, bottom stock by margin. So I won't drill into all of these. These are all standard dashboards that come with EXO. And the reason why they're showing on the screen is because they're ticked in the accessible widgets list for this tab. Okay. Uh, any of these tabs you can remove or add widgets to or from just by picking something else. Okay, so this is a widget that wasn't already there. That can easily just be ticked and added to that screen and saved so that it's there next time. Uh, finance is around uh, debtors and creditors uh, trial balance. And these are examples of pivot widgets, okay? Uh, so a pivot widget has a grid at the top and a chart at the bottom. They can be repositioned so you can see more or less of whatever it is that you're looking at. Um, and the chart area has tabs. So a pivot chart normally would show for the cell on the grid that you've selected. The data mining chart is the chart of the whole widget, and the details grid is the specific item you've highlighted, um, in this case, the aging for a particular customer account. Um, I'll show you some other examples of pivot widgets, but they basically have very similar functionality to creating a pivot table in Excel, and depending on where you drag and drop rows and columns, uh, you can get a very different look at the same data. Uh, the purchases widget uh, again is more around supplier analysis, so supplier invoices, top 10 suppliers, by margin um, or by purchase value for the year to date, which is probably a more um, useful widget. And then two custom ones on the end, which I have just named notionally General Ledger and Jobs. And A widget can be added to that. So this is an example of a pivot widget, which is basically showing a profit and loss summary on a rolling 12 months, uh, but in a drillable form rather than as a report. Okay, so analytics and various other places of, in EXO can have custom dashboards added to them. So I'll just save that one. Uh, so analytics I would describe more as, you know, dashboards for reporting information purposes. Other useful uh, applications for widgets or dashboards are exception type information. And that can be placed all over EXO. Uh, so as an example, when you first log in in the morning, you will see uh, in most of the EXO applications, the first thing you're going to see is the task scheduler, which is like an Outlook calendar, uh, and that can be day, week, month view. And if you're using tasks and activities in EXO, that might be very useful. Uh, but if you prefer to log in in the morning and see some snapshot information about your business, then you can simply add a widget to this screen Uh, and depending on your role, you might want to see different information. But as an example, let's add job hours versus budget. And cash.
reposition those so I can save them. Alright, so what I've basically done there is I've added two widgets. You should be able to see them as tabs down the bottom. And then I've relocated my activity search, which is the default one, and I've put it at the end. What that basically means is whatever one is on the left is the first thing I'm going to see when I log in in the morning. So depending on your role, that could be overdue accounts, it could be a P&L, it could be... Um, you know, over, low stock, depending on your role. Uh, so this is an example of positioning a widget, you know, on the menu of EXO uh, to give you some snapshot, snapshot information that uh, is maybe a little more accessible and means you haven't got to go navigating to some other part of the system to get it. Uh, so this one is a pivot of all the active jobs, what the estimated hours are or were, what the actual hours are and what's left, as an example. Uh, this one is a cash widget, which is basically a summary of the balances of the cash-related accounts in the general ledger, bank account, debtors, GST, creditors, PAYG. So what's, what's in the bank, uh, what debtors are we expecting to collect, what creditors do we need to pay, and what are our other liabilities that are likely to need to be paid. Uh, so I think that's a pretty powerful feature in EXO is the ability to add these types of um, this type of information in the application itself rather than even necessarily go off to a separate screen. So other examples of how you might do that, when you go to the sales tab, you've got your sales menu and depending on your role, you might be wanting to look at overdue sales orders. So I've made overdue sales orders a tab right next to the sales workflow menu and any of these sales orders. Uh, so these are the orders that have a due date prior to today, therefore they're overdue. And they are drillable. So that's a feature of a grid widget. You can set the click to. that allows you to drill directly into the sales order uh, and you then can see what's on the order and specifically you know what items need to be supplied and then back to the widget okay um, in my case I've created two I've added two widgets overdue sales orders and jobs nearing completion uh, both of which can be drilled. This one's a clarity version, and this one is a grid version. I've also got two separate layouts saved, sales one and sales two, because sales one is more my credit management layout, which gives me my debtor's age trial balance sorted by overdue account, and new customers that have been set up in the system in the last 30 days, so that I can check, for example, have they been set up with the right credit terms? Uh, do they have the right price? Are they set to the right account group from a reporting perspective? And who's the sales rep that's assigned to that customer? Similarly with the purchases or stock, uh, let's say the person responsible for managing inventory might always want quick access to low stock and high stock. Now you can obviously run forecast purchase orders and stock reports to see that, but as a quick glance, uh, again a, dash, a dashboard 
goes a long way to um, you know, alerting you of exceptions like that. So in this case, low stock by warehouse, then by supplier. So it's shown. Then the details grid is showing for that supplier uh, what item, what's its min max, current on hand, and obviously the, the shortage. So that's again an example of adding widgets to the menu uh, that you can refer to very quickly rather than navigate off to another part of the EXO system. You have exactly the same options in the CRM module and the job costing module. Another way of approaching dashboards is on the reports tab there's a dashboard button. And that will just launch a floating dashboard screen. And particularly if you use dual monitors, uh, that's a good way of having dashboards uh, you know, constantly available whilst you're still working in EXO doing other things. So if I um, I'll demonstrate partly by dragging that dashboard sort of halfway out of my screen, but I guess if you can envisage having dual monitors, you can have your dashboard on one monitor, XO or job costing on the other monitor, and the dashboard will be refreshing with new tasks or updated information about what it is that you're wanting to keep an eye on while you work on your day-to-day -day stuff. Again, that uh, floating dashboard can have as many layouts as you like and as many different widgets. Uh, as you like, you know, either as tabs or as split screen type widgets. Okay. So the floating dashboard is good, particularly if you have dual screens. And then uh, I guess the third area where dashboards now come into play is within records themselves. So for example, a debtor account has always had a tab called the analysis tab and it's always had a chart on it that shows historical sales uh, for a rolling 13 months for that customer. Uh, but what MYOB did in the last couple of releases is make this tab a dashboard tab so that you could choose to remove this one or add other ones uh, to the analysis tab. So let's say data sales history. And this is a dashboard showing historical sales of every item uh, to this customer um, in the last 12 months with the invoice number, date, stock code, description, quantity, price. Uh, and this is a drillable widget that allows you to actually view the invoice that that related to. Okay, so um, dashboards or widgets can be added now to the analysis tab of a debtor, a creditor, a stock item, and a job, amongst other things, uh, which just again means that rather than move to a different part of the system to run a report to get information, you can make that information available where it most logically would be. So I might call this tab data. So as I said, you have the same option on a supplier on the analysis tab there. That's now a widget. Uh, 
an example of how you might use that for stock. So stock has an analysis tab and it is historical sales purchases quantity value. That's always been there. Uh, but you now might say, I also want to see stock item sales history. Which is, what invoices has this item been sold on in the last 12 months? Drillable directly to the invoice. And also stock item purchase history. Is the purchase orders and or invoices that we've entered uh, for that item from the different suppliers we might buy it from. Um, so I'll just go a level further and show you how particularly a grid widget because they're the easiest ones to create, um, how a grid widget works. You'll see on these widgets there's a grid tab and an SQL tab. And the SQL is basically a query uh, written in SQL language to get the information. Um, why I'm showing you that, if you don't know SQL, um, I guess it, what it would highlight is that you know there's a very small little bit of code needed to create a dashboard. So if it's something that you've got some people with internal skills that can write a little SQL statement, then you can go for your life and create as many widgets as you like. But alternatively, if you don't, um, asking us to do it is not going to result in a very big bill because widgets are really quick and easy to create. I can even do it. Um, so the advantage of uh, a grid widget like that is a very simple SQL statement can return you know, quick information to people in your business uh, that just speeds up your processes. Um, I'll point out that a pivot widget is exactly the same, except uh, so it's just an SQL statement as well, except rather than just a straight grid, it presents you with pivot options. Okay, so uh, the intention was to, I guess, cover what, how you can deploy dashboards in XO, what's available as standard. So when you click on the plus sign here, you'll see whatever widgets are in the system, um, most of which will have been created as standard widgets by MYB. Um, when you're in the configuration module, like we saw earlier, then this is where you can create new ones, and you can create new ones by copying existing ones. So particularly if it's a grid widget, uh, let's see, overdue. So I've created one called overdue sales orders, and I've created one called overdue purchase orders. And these are grid widgets, and they're simply an SQL statement selecting a small number of fields from where the purchase orders live and where the due date is in the past, less than today's date, basically. Um, a simple way of making an alternative one for that would be to copy it. Maybe call it POs seven days overdue. In this case, we'd be saying it's exactly the same information, but the due date is less than today's date minus seven. I've selected all modules 
and financial controller menu only. We're about to find out how good my SQL coding skills are, so I'll try and run that widget now. It has not appeared. Let's just double check that. I'm just refreshing my setting, which is basically what you do any time a configuration change or a menu change in EXO has occurred, uh, which should make it available. There it is. And now it's showing me uh, the same list, but only where the due date is uh, at least seven days prior to today's date. And then I can make that drillable and click into the purchase order, follow up with the supplier as to why that's overdue and carry on. Okay, so um, that concludes the webinar. I hope you found that informative. We are happy to provide you with whatever assistance you like, customising your own widgets or obviously do some for you. After this webinar, I'm going to email around some custom widgets that we've already done that we think are more generally helpful. Um, so an example of that will be a debtor's age trial balance and a creditor's age trial balance as a widget rather than a report. Uh, overdue purchase orders and sales orders, low stock and high stock. Um, and happy to help you with any others that, that you would like. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to fire away. If your phone is muted, just unmute it by pressing hash six. Uh, I'll hang on the phone for a couple of minutes to field any questions. Otherwise, uh, thanks for attending and we'll uh, see you in two weeks. Okay, doesn't seem like there are any questions, so thanks for attending and I'll uh, conclude the webinar now uh, and we'll talk to you again in two weeks. Thank you very much.